Tools in Roblox Studio. Tools are a classic in a lot of Roblox games, especially back in the good old days during the golden era of Roblox. I'm talking swords, rocket launchers, the super cool things, you know. And we're going to be talking about that today inside of Roblox scripting. So first off, I just want to explain what a tool is. First off, a tool is an instance or an object that a humanoid object can equip. If I click on play right here, let me show you where they're equipped. So if I go over to the players inside of the here and open up my character, which is Rusty Silly Band, but for you it's going to be your character, you'll notice that I have a backpack. Now, this backpack object is parented to the player object, as you can see, which is me, or in your case it would be you. But right now there's nothing inside of here. And if I were to click on the plus icon and insert a tool right here, you can see it's going to pop up on the bottom of my screen. Now if I were to equip this tool just by clicking on it right here, you'll notice that the tool is no longer in my backpack when I equip it. When I let go of it, it's in my backpack. When I like equip it, it's no longer in my backpack. And that's because it moves from the backpack and into the player's character inside of workspace whenever they equip it. You can see my tool is now inside of my character inside of the workspace. Which is pretty interesting how that works. Now by default, Tools are held in the player's right hand, but right now we don't actually have a handle for them. And you'll notice that if I reset my character here, I'm going to lose the tool when I respawn, which is unfortunate. But I'm going to show you guys what we can do to combat that. So first off, there's a folder right here called Starter Pack. You know, it has a little hammer right here. This thing is pretty much meant for any tool that you want the player to start off with. You'll notice that if I put a tool inside of here and click on play, not only will I start off with the tool inside of my backpack, and I can equip it and everything, but if I reset my character, I'm going to respawn with that tool as well, as you can see right here, which is pretty cool, which means that we don't need to lose the tool every single time we die, if that makes sense. Now let's talk about some tool properties. Let's just go down all the way down here. A few of the ones that are going to be used the most are in the behavior tab and the properties. So can be dropped. Let me explain what this is. If you click on play real quick. If you have your tool and press on backspace, you can drop your tool. And you can see normally if we had a handle for the tool, it would fall onto the workspace right here. But we don't have one of those, so it just kind of disappears. And you'll notice it's no longer in my inventory. Let's go down here. You can turn off can be dropped if you want to. And that'll just make it so the player cannot drop their tool. And the second one is requires handle. Now, if you set this to true, then your tool is going to need a handle in order to function. But if you turn this off, your tool will not need a handle. So let's go ahead and equip it. And so normally, if we just had some sort of script inside of here, it wouldn't really run or work all too well if we didn't have a handle. But now we have that handle property turned off. We don't actually need a handle for our tool. So let's just click on stop up here. I'm just going to enable requires handle. Now you may be wondering what is a handle. Now a handle is simply some sort of mesh part or part or really any instance that resembles a 3D model inside of here can be used as the handle. Except for I guess a model. But you can use unions, base parts, mesh parts, whatever. And so let's put this part inside of the tool. And in fact, I'm going to move this tool into the workspace so you guys can see it better. And you'll notice that if I leave this part named as part and click on play, then this tool, it just simply doesn't work. Yeah, there's a part inside of it, but it's not named handle. And we need to name it handle because that way Roblox will recognize this as a handle that we can use to pick up our tool. So let's go ahead and play it again. And you'll notice I can now pick up my part just like this. And don't forget that you can very easily scale this however you want to. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can add multiple parts if you want to. The only problem is that if you add multiple parts to it, you're going to have to weld them together. And I'm going to show you how to do that in one second. Let's say I have this little, I guess you could say it's either some sort of dumbbell or I guess nunchucks. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as we have it. So you'll notice that if we have multiple parts in here named handle, then it's not going to work. You can only have one part named handle, as you can see right here. The rest of these, we'll just name this one middle part. And this one is going to be left part. So now we have the handle, we have the left part, and we have the middle part. 
So I'm going to grab the left part and the middle part and just place them inside of the handle for safekeeping. And then we can add a plus icon and add something that we call a weld constraint. Now a weld constraint is what we use to hold two parts together. As you can see inside of the properties, we have a part zero and a part one. Part zero will be the object that you want to attach another object to. So in this case, it's going to be our handle. But part one is going to be the object that you want to attach to the other object. So for this one, it's going to be left part. I'm going to rename this weld constraint to left part dash handle. That way we know which one it's going to. And this one I'm going to rename to middle part dash handle. And I just duplicated this by pressing control and D by the way. I'm going to change part one to middle part. So now we have all of our parts welded together. If we go ahead and click on play, you'll notice that when I pick up our tool, everything stays together. Now, tools are great and all, but if you don't know how to script them, they're kind of useless. They're just kind of sitting there. I mean, sure, you can hold them, but there's not really much to do with them. So that's why we can insert a local script inside of this tool right here. And you'll notice that with this local script, it says that this is a script that runs on clients, not servers. And that local scripts can only run when they're parented under one of the following of all of these things on the left right here. You'll notice that it says a player's backpack and a player's character model, which is perfect because both of those are where our tool is going to be. So I'm going to use a local script right here, and I'm going to start off here in the top of our script saying local tool will be equal to script.parent. This is just going to get the tool that we have right here. And you'll notice tool has a few different events. We have tool.activated, which will fire whenever the player clicks while a tool is equipped. So let's go ahead and connect a function to this, and then print tool was activated with an exclamation point. Let's go ahead and click on play. So let's grab our tool real quick and go up to the view tab and then click on the output. When we click with this tool, it's gonna to say tool was activated. And you can run any sort of function off of this as you saw. We just used a print statement though for an example. And that's pretty cool. But there are a few other events that we can do. There's also tool.equipped. So this is going to fire whenever the tool is equipped. So let's connect a function to this as well. I'm just going to print tool was equipped. An exclamation point as well. Let's go ahead and click on play. Now you'll notice that whenever I pick up this tool, I'm going to print tool is equipped. And every time that I equip the tool, it's going to be doing that. Now we can equip the tool, we can activate the tool, everything's going well. And you probably noticed that since we have an equipped event, we also have a tool.unequipped event. Let's go ahead and connect another function here and print tool was unequipped. One more exclamation point. You'll now notice that when we pick up our part, it'll say tool is equipped. Clicking our part, tool is activated, and then unequipping our tool, tool was unequipped. So that's the basic functionality of a tool here. Now this is the basic functionality of a tool inside of Roblox Studio. Ultimately, if you'd like to learn all the different events and properties and everything that has to do with a tool, there will be a link down in the description just on Roblox's developer hub if you'd like to go there and just learn about everything that a tool can do and does. But for now, this is pretty much everything that you're going to need to know about how to use and set up a tool inside of Roblox Studio. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.